Hi, today I had an opportunity to conduct a training session titled Let Your Students Fail in Classrooms, Developmental Error for Teachers of Daffodils Foundation for Learning, CBAC and ICC Wing, Bangalore. The aim of the workshop was to bring out several aspects of creativity, allowing teachers to think, try and apply in classrooms. I am delighted to have a conversation with teachers who attended the training session. I am eager to listen to their experience of the session and their objective to use this session in classrooms. First and foremost, I would like to thank Principal Madam for the opportunity to share my thoughts of creativity and interact with her wonderful team of teachers for the podcast. I begin by asking the teachers to introduce themselves and share their first reaction of the session. I am uh, Hema Jaira. I am a teacher of science and English. I teach uh, from grade 7 through grade 10. I guess the session was a revelation. I am Mrs. Veena. I handle English for grade 7. 8th, 9th and 10th. This session was really very interesting. Uh, the title of the session when it spoke about developmental errors and failures kept me guessing for a while about what it would be and I uh, found it very very informative. Thank you. Thank you teachers for sharing your first reaction of the session. Uh, in the session there are several aspects of creativity were uh, touched upon such as imagination, immersion and mundane. I would like to understand which aspect of that you could relate to it and why would you relate to it? I guess I could relate to the immersive uh, aspect, the immersion. And that's basically, I guess, uh, every aspect has to be researched and then the involvement. Uh, when the passion is there, it leads to involvement and then to immersion. And I believe I could relate to it at the end with Newton's example. Perhaps it is his immersion that uh, brought us this great theory. So I could relate to that sir. and also my combination of English and uh, science, I could uh, vibe very well with that uh, concept. I also could relate to the immersive aspect of uh, creativity here. What set me thinking here was that small point about uh, listening to certain things that are not said by children. Many children in the class, you know, they are not able to express and we think that they are not with us but perhaps they are understanding in a different way perhaps they are involved from a different angle so somewhere it set me thinking about uh, listening to unsaid words wonderful thank you teacher for sharing your points on which aspect it touched you and why it touched you i also would like to understand anything we learn we we try at least applying something what we learn so I would like to know how would you look forward to apply some aspects of creativity which you looked at in the session today and how would you like to go about it? I guess uh, probably uh, this immersive concept if I have to take it forward, I would probably make every science class a lab activity and every English class an English lab, why not if we can have labs for science, why not uh, English? Experiential learning uh, could be an extended uh, part of all my classes. A playground can be a classroom, a classroom can be a playground and an English class can be a library at times. Yeah, I think these are fascinating ideas to see that having a class in library would probably make children to think and look at things differently than they have seen it. Same thing going to a playground if there is an opportunity for it or even probably going to an open classroom which doesn't have bench and they sit down like something like this and they start doing it maybe some session in a week or two weeks once some session. Yeah, wonderful. I'm very happy to say that we do have that in our school where we have these uh, group activities where children are allowed to sit uh, on the corridors, sometime on the ground, the basketball ground that we have here. They sit in groups and they brainstorm, they come up with beautiful uh, posters, they come up with, with uh, wonderful debates. So we do take children out of the classroom. From this workshop, uh, somewhere what I learned is uh, interpretation of uh, the errors that the child makes, that was something that hit me uh, really hard because when we say the child makes a mistake in the class, the first reaction is what were you doing when I was teaching? But here, when the child makes a mistake, probably it's the child's effort to move towards understanding. That new interpretation I got from this uh, workshop. Yeah, I think it's a very nice example. I think many times we conclude, uh, especially in examination point of view, that if the child doesn't get the right answer in the end, we think that child has done it wrong. And there are teachers sometimes take very strict measure putting zero for completely, you know. So disheartening to see at times uh, for young children especially I'm talking yes. about. Thank you for sharing for a very interesting aspects of um, looking at how do you look forward to apply this creative aspects in classrooms. I also understand that 
uh, there is a limitation of an ecosystem and there are uh, boards which control the way it should function some aspects of it um, so if do you see there are any blockers in applying create aspects in teaching or um, if not why not you don't have any blockers i would love to listen if you say that there are no blockers but if you have a blockers and i would like to see what are those blockers are and uh, how would you intend to overcome them i guess one blocker that i could think is if i'm politically if i can use this word neural <laughs> diversity okay. you know the learner diversity probably mm-hmm. may be a block for me uh, as such because i may not be able to um, resonate with all the students in the class mm-hmm. um, we going with this multiple intelligences theory a child may learn through kinesthetics another child may learn through music another child may be a thinker uh, so i don't know if i will be able to don those different hats and uh, resonate with these students that could be a block with me so if i have to probably overcome this block i guess beyond classrooms i must spend uh, time with each one of them perhaps uh, in a you know sequence of time like i meet two students today i meet two n- tomorrow to understand how they learn best yeah i think that i probably didn't i missed out today in the session to talk about this aspect because i remember in one of the icc school i was telling and then i told them in the spread across a year whole academic year assuming that the children go to next class and they are not with you anymore i'm talking about a possibility like that i told i asked the teacher that can you at least appreciate every child in the class once in one academic year is a trying something which you not tried every child and i said is a genuine appreciation which you see for example i told them in some school i saw a child has an amazing shoe there's nothing to do with my session nothing to do with what i'm doing but i love the shoe i said the shoe is really nice and uh, did you pick or did your parents pick and they said sir i liked it and my parent got for me that itself i'm sure the child will remember and i will remember i'm giving an example already now already about it yeah so wonderful to see uh, that there is a blocker and you want to fix a blocker yes yes sir uh, to add on sir the example that you said just now that is also one thing we would say that we do in our school uh-huh. on the day of the result we have something called a smile okay. where the class teacher gives a small note to every child wow, appreciating okay. the hmm. child for something that has happened uh, over the period of time yeah, i know there are amazing nice yeah. gestures yeah yes Yes, and uh, that really works wonders for children. And yes, we they, do have. They are ready to come back to school. Uh, they are motivated, and we feel nice about it. Yeah, getting always a personal note makes a lot of difference for a lot of people. Yes. And we do have these circle times uh-huh. uh, where um, uh, we all sit in a circle, we open a topic, an interesting topic, and uh, a child gets to hold uh, a toy in his or her hand and express uh, his or her opinion mm-hmm. in an uninhibited manner. so we do have this regularly uh, circle time with the class teacher we do have circle time our leader has a circle time with us yes. i guess this happens for all the grades uh, yeah. across all across grades all wow grades. okay this is nice wonderful yes. I, i know this is a push children to believe in teacher more yeah yes yeah. and here if i have to tell about uh, blockers here it is more to do with me as my expectation from myself is a block okay uh, of apart from the system that we talk about uh, completing the syllabus and uh, the time constraints uh, i think i should be more uh, flexible to bring about those sudden on the spot changes that are required depending on the mood of the children on that particular day if uh, i can um, afford to be a little less perfect and a little more flexible i think i will be definitely be able to do more yeah this is widely de- debated about being perfectionist sometime looks all right and looks important on other side you feel that there are sometime we get into a nitpicking yes. of small small things and we try wanting to fix that but some if somebody is not comfortable with those things yes. fairly right um, i also would like to understand is there anything in the session that touched you very high i is something we already express i understand uh, or would you like to give me some suggestion which i could go back and improve and think what what could i do it more better something that really touched me is that early adjournment uh, i guess uh, most of us overlook it or oversee it at times early adjournment and uh, that could be because that could be because we go back our own lives and see where we have early adjourned mm-hmm. ourselves and uh, where we have probably gone wrong with the batches which have already graduated uh, you know but that was the one uh, which really uh, you know um, made a mark uh, on me uh, so early adjournment it is something that we need to be wary of uh, i feel um, other than that i think uh, session was wonderful uh, thank I, you I, a wonderful session sir it's, it was really great and i don't think <laughs> it could be uh, 
I've met so many people to give uh, it with the uh, feedback is constructive. Okay, All thanks so much. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, I agree with uh, my friend here. It is that uh, stage of creativity that you said, that you spoke about that journey part, uh, which kind of raised the antenna. I shouldn't be the trigger for somebody to. Uh, you know, reach that stage beforehand. You know, I should never, especially when we are working with children, we should, like you said, try to make that performance as long as possible, never bring that a journey. We do not know the background of the children much. Mm. The, you know, the family and things, and after the pandemic, those children have had traumatic times. So we should not do anything or say anything that would bring that a journey even a day earlier. So it made me feel that uh, you know I'm more responsible. I need to be very very careful about my words, my thoughts, my deeds in the class. Yeah, it is hard, so, and then it is like a lot of humility often. Sometimes people might be not right to you, but still you not adjoining is not easy. Um, yes. And sometimes we put some thought process somewhere else, and yes. that may not be adjoining for a while for a moment, but that may be adjoining somebody else. Thanks for that. Ma'am, any improvement suggestion for the session if you have? Sir, I think uh, the examples uh, that you took to uh, help us think creatively and do things, they were all centered around mathematics. Right. I was about to come to that point. Yeah. yeah. If it can be a little more diversified, I right. think it would uh, really help. Yeah. One of the principals of the school told me the same uh, feedback. Uh, I remember. Yeah. yeah. yeah I I'm mean, working on I that. I have nothing. That has nothing to do with the ratings, sir, because the workshop as a whole was beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, was, well, all these things, I think we, I never would have introspected and come out with these things uh, ever if left on my own. But here, spending a few couple of hours here made me think so much, and there's so much clarity in my mind. Uh, this is one small uh, thing that I wanted to. Generally put true, maybe because I'm two positions of maths and centered around mathematics. I, th I think I need to break my own chain of uh, creative thought process and try to get into and other aspects of it. Yeah, I think uh, the the way I look at this session, the way it started was like, about, it was about one hour and it's one to two hours now. If I add element, I'm sure it's going to be like two and a half, three hours in the future to come. But yeah, it is an important uh, feedback. I've received once and I'm receiving second. That means people want something beyond that too, that I understand. Let me take a final question. If I had asked you to rate the session from a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being the lowest, 5 being the highest, what would be number? Go first there. <laughs> <laughs> I would rate it uh, 4. Okay. And uh, any reasons for 4? I mean, you can put a both plus and minus, I would like to. It was very good, sir. So I think 4 is justified. The one thing why I came to 4 is what I've already told you. Because I'm, I come from an English background. So somewhere I felt that I couldn't really get involved in the kind of uh, activities. Mm. So uh, that's it. Sir. True, true. Four point five, sir. Being a science teacher, I could, I, I guess, I could relate to math. <laughs> so point five justified there. Yeah, wonderful. A wonderful session, sir. Uh, we really could uh, uh, relate, and I guess you brought in a few corporate concepts. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's very important uh, for educational institutions to look at some of the corporate concepts. And for corporate, uh, um, uh, you know, um, people to look at some of the concepts in the uh, school, in an educational institution. So that cross-industry domains that you touched upon, I guess that was a, that's a thumbs up uh, there. Because most, many of uh, us are not exposed to the corporate domain. So I guess corporate, they do work and that is how we see the, the success stories that we read are not many of schools but of large organizations right. which have contributed to the economy of India or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I guess somewhere the something can be imbibed from there and I think you did make a connection there, you did bridge that. So that was a little uh, impactful if I may say. Yeah, yeah, true. The other way also should work in fact. Other way also should work. When, uh, Absolutely. There are talks in the corporate world Real-time examples from schools should be should, 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 should. True. I, I think uh, teachers have to build a case studies and uh, publish them in many places. As simple as start blogging. Yes. So that could be trying untried little things about your own experiences. I, I put yes. that, sir. Yeah, yeah. In my untried thing, I said I should start my own blog. Yeah. As simple as experience of a day, what happened? You don't have to call yes. out a student's name in case you don't want to call out. But you can see these experience I saw in my class. And it's something which is a takeaway for me to think in my next class to do it. I think the more we collage and bring cases like this out, I think the more things happen. This, For example, this podcast itself is an, an example. 
example of a case bringing order from school and also from a teacher who generally don't get opportunity to wise their thought process at um, many times so i think the more we voice it out and the more we going to have content of it and the schools examples can be set forth and shown that because i, I feel schools have lot of success stories uh, or and success built stories uh, but, but many times uh, they unsung heroes many times they just stay within floor also reason because um, teachers are not made probably the internet and uh, factors of mobile have been corrupted to a certain degree of the various genuine reasons maybe some schools might think but on the other side i think they should penetrate in some form to teachers and students in classroom the conditions told because of they are very genuine condition because it's a child who will get influenced but there is a product we have looking at it like let's all go to twitter and um, try to each one of us talk about this and build a story start a twitter thread as a teacher and everybody else puts it so actually we can use an in, you know, internet tool very differently uh, and it. that would be look a very different way of learning yeah. some subject for your own right and people can go surf and put then examples there and there's nothing wrong because they're learning it right like if you take english grammar let's say i start with a noun and then i give example can you think of an example something where you can free to surf and but you put an example in next few minutes and let's look at college all of us on the board uh, i think they're going to bring an aspect of creativity of in doing it and uh, they'll also make children oh i'm going to learn things um, something which i also feel nice about it and then maybe they'll connect and learn more better yeah thank you very much for rating and feedback and uh, i hope the session will help educators and students to think try and apply in classrooms thank you for sharing your thoughts i appreciate it stay safe healthy and happy god bless you all Thank, thank you sir so. thank you so much our pleasure totally